Hey mailbag fans, welcome back. It's that time of the week again. It's Mailbag Monday. Starting off, as is tradition, with a beer. And I'm going a little bit out of my comfort zone. It's a lager this time. Red Roof Lager is brewed by Fort Gary Brewing um, in Winnipeg. And it is commemorating or something or, or cooperating with Salisbury House restaurants, which are a local chain of, uh, in, here in Manitoba, mostly in Winnipeg of basically 24 hour diners. Um, they became really popular because they were the only place to get food after the bar closed for years and years and years. Um, it's, I don't know. It, it's one of those things. If you're from here, if you grew up with it, it's great. Their pies and baking is actually really good. Um, the burgers are, well, they're diner burgers, you know, but it's one of those local things. Anyway, see what I mean about this is nowhere near my normal comfort zone. You can actually see through this, but in the interest of supporting local causes, I shall have this. Yep. That's definitely a lager definitely not uh malty or stouty like i would normally have but as a summer beer that wouldn't actually be that bad all right thing the first plastic sheet and plastic sheet uh, grab the knife first try thanks marcel good idea okay let's see what we got in here we have oh an assortment of things cool some more of these mini breadboards. Huh. Oh, wait. They're not the same as these other mini breadboards I've got. They're medium sized mini breadboards. Will they still fit on the little backboard thingy? Yes, they will. Oh, wow. Okay. So, to add to my ever increasing variety of sizes of breadboards because you can just never have too many breadboards and too many different sizes seven pieces mini 55 points breadboards autos prototype plus pcb adapter board ass assorted maybe um i got seven of them currently they're selling for 319 i paid 316 for them from Superstar, uh, whoever that guy is, I don't know, uh, from China, free shipping, yada yada, and it's little breadboards. I could have bought them with an extra base, but I didn't need an extra base because I already got the one, you see. And also in the same package from the same seller, what do we have here? Some kind of connectors, I'm guessing. USB connectors. Oh, okay. So, so you solder onto those, I guess. They are just your standard USB connector. Oh, I could probably use them on a board, too. Or I can use them in cable end mode like this. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder what I was thinking when I bought that. Still, that's pretty cool. A whole bunch of them, too. Wow. Ten pieces type A USB, four pin female socket adapter, connector plastic shell, cover ass. Hmm. Uh, again, from Superstar, because of course it came in the same package. Dollar sixty-eight for the ten of them. And these, where's my note? Um, these only took 24 days to get here. That's surprisingly good. Okay, next thing in, it is, it doesn't say what it is, electronics, quantity one, that's what it is, sure, well wrapped, whatever it is, Ooh, a couple of modules, four modules, two modules, uh, click, okay, <laughs> So what do we have here? We have zip, 
We have an out plus and minus. We have an in plus and minus. We have an adjuster. We've got a capacitor at each end. We've got three inductors. Diode, diode. And the brains is an XL Semi XL6009E1. So I guess we'll have to go to the listing and find out what that is. But with those two inductors there, I'm wondering if this is a combination buck boost. Two, five, ten pieces boot, boost buck DC adjustable step up, step down converter. XL6009 module voltage. I bought two of them for 371. Singles go for a buck seventy-one from Satisfy Electronics. Wide input voltage five to thirty-two volts. Wide output voltage one point two five to thirty-five volt. With automatic buck, any voltage can be arbitrarily okay. Uh, four amp MOSFET switches at four hundred kilohertz, so it shouldn't create too much noise. What else? Um, Input current 3 amps max. Output ripple 550 millivolts. That's not horrendous. That's not too bad at all. Uh, with no load, it's only drawing 18 milliamps. Yeah, not great for battery backup, but you can move with that. And those took pretty much exactly one month to get here. I guess we should see what this thing can do, huh? I got five volts coming out of my little power supply over here. This power supply, a lot of people ask me actually. Um, the box I made myself, um, and just out of plastic, there's a video way back, if you look about a year and a half ago. I'll link it if I can remember. And it's being powered inside, it's just a buck converter um, that's capable of uh, constant current or constant voltage. Uh, and it's being fed through one of these little things that I got in the last post bag uh, from just a laptop power supply. Nothing fancy. It can do up to about two amps. Um, and yeah, it, it's maximum voltage is, well, whatever my power brick's putting out, which is like 19 volts and it can buck all the way down to almost nothing. Anyway, that's an aside. Uh, so five volts coming out of there. This is, let's put these the right way around, shall we? And get out of the way of the meter so you can see. It's at 13.7 right now. Okay. I'm going to wind it all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom. Okay, there's the top, 40.1 volts. Let's spin it down to the bottom. Still with the 5 volt input. I think we've bottomed out there at 1.27 volts. That's pretty cool. So it doesn't really matter what your input voltage is anymore. I like it. All right, next, a big one. Anchor 5-pack power only. Okay. So I think, if I remember correctly, this is some USB charge cables, I think. Super well packaged, wow. Yeah, that's like massive bubbles. And we're still a little skished. Yeah, Anchor Charging Essentials. Oh, wow. Happy? Not happy? Okay. Um, five charging cables. Two of that length, two of that length, and one of this. Oh, it says right on there. Uh, 0 0.3 meters, 0 0.9 meters, and one point eight meters. Well, that's great. I suppose I'm going to have to pull out my, uh, my little test jig and just see. Now, the reason I ordered these, if I remember correctly, is that 
the the power lines in them are not as light a wire. They're a much heavier gauge wire than your typical USB charging lead, like these little dollar store ones, or even, you know, these. That's the other connector, but, you know. Um, and if you remember from my, uh, my test that I did a few months back, most of them really suck. The only ones that didn't suck horribly are the, uh, the brand name ones that came with, uh, with the Samsung and Blackberry phones. So let me go and, uh, find the listing for this. And while I'm, while I'm doing that, I'll set up my test jig that I had set up before and we'll just run these guys through the paces quickly. Anchor 5 pack power line, micro USB, durable charging cable, 1 foot times 2, 3 foot times 2, and 1 6 foot for Samsung, Nexus, LG, smartphones, Android, etc. Uh, the current price is twenty sixty nine, but when I bought them, I paid ten ninety nine. So shop around, take your time, you can get stuff on sale. And here's what makes these ones special. They've got some reinforcing in them to make them a lot stiffer and stronger. And they've got really thick conductors. There it is there. 30 gauge data wires, super fine. And 20 gauge power wires. Oh, a 20 gauge positive power wire and an 18 gauge power wire and sheathing. So that's super duper thick. Uh, compared to your average one. Okay, here's the same test setup as before. Um, I've got exactly 5 volts coming out of the connector there. If I can measure it. 4.99, okay. I've got my 1 amp load here. And let's just try these. I'm expecting the short one to be able to do it with no problem at all. So we'll just uh, connect him on there. This guy jumps up to just a hair over one amp. Expecting good things. 4.75, so that's a quarter of a volt drop across that wire. That's better than most of the other ones, if I remember correctly. Uh, I think, what was my best one, 4 point, one of the best of the cheap ones was uh, 4.46. So that's pretty good. What I'm really interested in, though, is seeing what the super long one does. Okay, so we're drawing 1.082 amps, according to that guy. And get in here. 4.69, 4.7. That's pretty good. That's not much of a difference from the longest one to the shortest one. I'll take those. And actually one of them is about to become my permanent one to power my camera while I'm recording here. All right, next we have PCB board. Printed circuit board board. Yay, auto translations. It is, though. It is a circuit board. Oh. These are some little single-sided copper-clad boards. Because I have seen several people etching boards on their own lately. Um, Big Clive does it occasionally. A couple other people. I can't remember who you are. I'm sorry. Some of you might be watching. Um, but using... I've seen... People using uh, not the traditional ferric chloride, but some other chemistries which aren't quite as toxic and are easier to dispose of. And more importantly to me and my cheapness gene, they're cheaper and easy, easily available. Um, with the demise of the local electronics shop, it's getting harder to find ferric chloride locally and... Because it's a hazardous material, it's expensive to get it shipped. Or at least from any place that I've found. So I'm eager to experiment with some of these other chemistries that these guys have been playing with and see if they work. 
10 piece one side copper clad 50 by 70 by 1.5 millimeter single PCB board glass fiber. So this is like it says, the fiberglass type, not the uh, phenolic resin impregnated paper type. And I know that there is some kind of, there's a designation FR something and FR something else. I can't remember that kind of crap. I'm sure somebody's going to point it out in the comments and that's cool. Um, but I'd rather think about what it, the material actually is than some code number. Anyway, I digress. Uh, this is from IC Station. And I paid $4.75 for it. And last in, we have something with its lies covered up. Hmm. From Kyrgyzstan, though. That's interesting. I'm pretty sure most of the stuff that I order claims to be from China. So that's kind of... Micro brush display. Disposable micro applicators. Uh huh. In yellow. Uh, fine. Okay. Just like it says on the box. Now then, I actually have some of these from that I just got as a sample pack from years and years ago, back when I was still actively modeling before model making that is not actually modeling um but i never bought any despite thinking they were pretty cool because they're horrendously expensive for what they are they are a teeny tiny little paint brush or lubricant application brush things like that and so, okay, I got a hundred of them in here in this cool little dispenser. That's neat. And I'm guessing that I paid a lot less for them than the brand name ones. One millimeter touch up paint micro brush, 100 brushes, small tip S micro applicators from a Shinko. I paid, no, I didn't pay 415. I paid less than that. I paid three ninety four. He's currently selling them for four fifteen um, for a hundred of them, and currently shipping for eighteen cents, which I didn't pay. Yeah, not much to say about them there. One millimeter diameter ball head, small tips, plastic, yellow. So that's a hundred of those for that. The brand name ones are somewhat more expensive especially if you go to amazon.ca uh, where are they here they are seriously well that's a 400 pack okay so still that's 10 that's pretty much 10 bucks wow so that's why I went with the cheap knockoffs from China See, it says right there, Shanghai, China. Even though the package said it came from Kyrgyzstan or some place like that. Wow. And here's today's Mailbag Monday haul. These micro brushes that we just looked at. The slightly larger mini breadboards. Those are cool. Uh, the USB cable ends or just ends. Copper clad board for etching. These two buck boosts, those are going to be handy. And I think this, well, maybe the star of the show, the good deal anyway, because this was like 10 bucks for five cables, two bucks each. You can't much beat that from the dollar store, except for these are good. And the ones from the dollar store are crap. Oh, you know what? I've been slacking on telling you how long these things took to get here. These things, one month, the buck boosts one month. The micro brushes were seven weeks. The USB connectors and breadboards were 24 days. I think they win the race this week. And the copper clad board was five and a half weeks. So there you go. Oh, I hope you found that interesting, amusing, 
um, living vicariously through my, uh, my buying cheap crap. That's all cool. Uh, any comments or questions or corrections, uh, down in the comments as always. And as always, a special thanks to my Patreon supporters who help me not go bankrupt buying this stuff, even though it's cheap stuff, you know, it adds up over time. Thanks again for watching. I will talk to you later.